One, I'm curious about how you determined a bedding site from the GPS data. So what, like, there's probably some people listening, uh, think about this data, and they're like, well, how did you actually know that the deer was bedded down? Because the caller is not telling you, like, this deer is laying down right now. It's just giving you a point in, in space. So how did you guys do that? Yeah. So um, essentially, again, we were getting a location every 15 minutes. And so what, just what we have to do quantitatively, because we're writing code, is, mm-hmm. is you got to come up with, with a rule. And our rule was that um, you have to have four consecutive points. So 15 minutes and then 30, 45 an hour, where they were in what a less than a 20-yard radius. Now, you might be asking, 20 yards in a bed? You got to keep in mind that that GPS collar is being triangulated by satellites. And there's trees and so forth. So, essentially, we get an error rate for a collar or for a group of collars, and we kind of determine that if we don't have a difference of 20 yards or 30 yards or whatever, then the deer or the buck or the animal is not moving. So you do have to make a little bit of assumptions there. So, But what we found with our data in that landscape that was pretty safe was we needed four or more consecutive points where the deviation from point one to point two to point three to point four was 20 yards or less. And we felt we were very safe concluding that deer is bedded. And so we also did not call a bed if it was in a food plot because it would be possible. It may not be very likely, but it is possible. You could have a a deer foraging and meandering around in a very small little circle or figure eight where it did not deviate from that 20 or 30 yard uh, radius. And so in that case, so we just eliminated anything that was in fields or uh, in a food plot. Because some people, I've seen them too, a deer will bed down occasionally in a food plot. Well, especially at night too. Maybe, that's right. Absolutely. Yeah. Or Late underneath the a feeder. That, right. They'll lay right next to, or a scrape, right. lay right next to the scrape for right. two hours. So we, we, we excluded those types of observations. So that, that's what we call a bed. Now, also, one other thing we're talking about, because we have uh, one deer in particular here pulled up. Uh, I got a couple questions. Number one, was there ever a factor where y'all went in and investigated some of these bed sites where maybe they were underneath just a really hot feed tree that those deer were spending a ton of time under, underneath the kind of the canopy of those trees? Yeah, it, it would have been difficult for us to determine how hot the feed tree was mm-hmm. because we're getting the data, uh, you know, in the past, Mm -hmm. you know, so we're getting data that might have occurred a week or two or three or longer, and then we have to compile them and find these points. So the white oak has already dropped. Well, I guess it'd be one of those things, if you went and investigated one of those bed sites, you would notice more than likely there's probably not a lot of bedding screening cover in that specific area as well. But also one important question I have is, did y'all average out roughly during any point of the season, how many beds like one, one of these bucks may use during, you know, say a week or three, four week time period, because that's like very common point that's being brought up that, you know, some people think they might use four or five beds. Some people think they might use one or two beds or, or whatever. So, um, so there's your, there's your answer okay. right there. So what you're going to see on the X axis down at the bottom is we have broken the rut up into two week intervals and so I know there's some non-conventional name. We usually say uh, pre-rut, rut, post-rut. Uh, but we have a, a pre, an early, a peak, a late, and post. And that is just basically taking all of the breeding season and breaking up into two-week intervals. And so what you'll see is over that whole hunting season, the average is uh, four. So the number of beds per buck per day. So that is just on the average hunting season and the rut, etc. But then you will notice now those bars are showing you two week intervals. And so then you will see the number of beds per buck for rut phase in the pre rut is 56. So for two weeks, over two using weeks, 50. Now is that different beds or just they're bedding like Different beds. Different beds. Okay. Mm-hmm. So now th- smokes. this wow. makes way more sense now that you explain this because I saw something <clears throat> similar of a chart like this because someone was mentioning y'all were doing that looked at the beds during the rut and like, well, of course, bucks are going to move a bunch during the rut. But I didn't realize it was a, this is a 10 week time period we're looking at. Like this mm-hmm. whole from mm-hmm. pre rut to the early rut, peak rut, late rut, post rut, the whole nine yards. We're looking at a 10 week period of time, which is 
a lot better than I was thinking because I was thinking this buddy stuff someone had said. I'm like, okay, maybe they're looking at three or four weeks. I'm like, okay, that's that's cool, but that's not that doesn't help me out a whole bunch because I'm kind of interested in buck bedding outside of that main peak breeding period of time. So that's super, super interesting. Also, it's interesting to note that in the early rut and peak rut, the number of bedding sites, sites decreased. Is that just because they're literally up or running around more and they're not that, bending as often? That, 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 that's our explanation, yeah. They're okay. just on their feet more. And we, we can run some algorithms, too, about a buck's behavior or any animal's behavior just based on uh, – this, this stuff gets re really complicated. Um, but, but essentially, we can determine – are they walking? Are they foraging? And it's all based on the speed that they're taking and the, the complicated route. But the data are very clear in terms of exactly what you think. When uh, during the peak rut, they are moving more, they're walking more, and they're bedded less. And so, yeah, you, so you just see that right there. I, I want to do two things here. First off, I want to specify for your listeners. And again, if you're if you're listening, you can go to YouTube and watch this right now. Uh, if it's up on YouTube, might not be up on YouTube quite yet. Um, in a two week time period, these bucks are averaging f just over fifty five during the pre rut, fifty five beds, uh, different beds in a two week time period. That is insane, um, especially in an area even like what you're saying because the way you describe this property you know, roughly being, you know, 50% somewhat agriculture, open ground and 50% hardwoods or timber. Um, I think it, I thought it would minimize the locations of buck bedding in that verse. If that wasn't clear cut, I'm like, okay, this makes, I mean, I can see this, but even like where you're at, um, that's, that's really fascinating to me first off, but also just the, the way the data is laid out to kind of give somebody a perspective of like how much variables there are with this. Cause I'm sure, there might have been one, maybe, I don't know. I don't know if y'all went through each individual buck. Maybe one buck was slightly more of a homebody compared to all the other ones, and maybe he liked his five or six, eight, ten spots that he liked the most. Uh, but for an average, that, that's pretty that's pretty wild. Um, also, can you give us a, this is a 10-week time period. What are y'all classifying as the pre-rut? If this is like rutting kind of like late December, January time frame, would that be kind of like late November are we talking about here? That. That, that's exactly right. So consider peak there right around Christmas. Okay. You know, so then you're backing up the early rut would be earlier December, mm -hmm. pre-rut. We're talking the last two weeks of November, something like that. Wow. Man, that's fascinating. That is actually really fascinating. That is super cool. So uh, beds per buck per day. So I'm assuming, just to clarify also, when you say day, you mean 24-hour time period, not daylight hours. That's correct. Okay. That's correct. 24 hours. Mm -hmm. I'd, I'm, I'd also be curious if there's been a distinction between uh, do they basically select different beds at, in the nighttime versus the daytime hours? I don't know if that's something y'all have looked at, but it's like in the daytime or they just they're just in the thicket, but in the night they're maybe a little bit more loosey goosey about where they bed. You know that maybe they'll lay up in that big white oak bottom or whatever. Yeah, um, that that deserves a closer look. Uh, we with what we've done so far, we haven't seen any difference that stood out to us. It's okay. almost like a, a bed is a bed. So here's fidelity oh, over the entire hunting season, mm -hmm. and so we're seeing. You know, we had some some questions about how often are they going back. Well, most of the time, a, a bed is one and done. And so that's what these slides are showing you here. The number of visits per buck for a particular bedding area. And we called a bedding area, we gave a little more slack or a little more latitude. It didn't just have to be a 20 acre. We expanded that out and called it a bedding area versus a site. 20 yards but, or 20 acres? No, you said... Uh, I'm gonna, oh, okay, okay, I'm going to okay. find that answer for oh, you. Okay, excellent, excellent. 100 yards. 100 yards. No, okay. oh, whoa, 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 whoa. let me make sure. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Yeah, bedding sites are separated by other sites greater than 100 yards. Okay. So if you look at that, um, we would have two in what's said bedding area one mm -hmm. right there. Those would be two distinct bedding sites, but one bedding area. Mm -hmm. So if they're within oh. 100 acres of each other, we're calling them a bedding area. 100 yards of each other. Within a hundred yards. Okay. Yeah. 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 Just we yeah, clarify. Okay. Perfect. Yeah. If it's greater than a hundred yards, they would be distinct and separate. Okay. Fascinating. Areas. Definitely go to YouTube to look at this visual because yeah. that visual helps me a ton. Yeah. Absolutely. 
this is real quick. Okay. Most of it's about 50% of the time it's one. Okay. And then we've got about what, 35, six, seven, they will use it two to five times. Uh, some of them then from six to 600 are used less than uh, 20% of the time. Um, and then there's just a very, very few, what is that number? Less than 5% mm -hmm. are used over and over again. Okay. So yeah. In terms of some of the questions you asked earlier, are there some places? There are very few of them. Absolutely. But most of them are one and done, and then certainly less than five times they're used. Okay, so this uh, fidelity by rut phase. So number of bedding areas visited, uh, and then it's broken out by phases of the rut again. So... Uh, interesting. So, so pre-rut, number of bedding areas visited. Is this... Uh, per day i'm guessing maybe well that that would be by rut phase so every two week interval so yeah the number of bedding areas visited uh during a rut phase okay so pre-rut six different bedding areas visited on average in the pre-rut and then early rut you're up to what is that nine peak rut ten Mm -hmm. Late rut back down to nine so i mean just perfect little bell curve and yeah. again defining a bedding area it's a hundred yard in diameter, rough area? Yeah, it would be one or more bedding sites okay. kind of within a 100-acre area. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. that was – there. Uh, again, we've talked about it uh, uh, like before on the podcast, but we had that GPS data we were looking at from Auburn, and there was one buck in particular. This is, this is like super interesting, where he had this little hardwood SMZ that he wanted to go – eat in every night and so he he would go down there and then he would go back up into this pine thicket there's like a a hill that went up out of this smz and it was thinned pines like i went back in the imagery to the to the the dates that he was there and it, they had thinned it the year before so you can imagine what it probably looked like in there and it, it was 27 nights in a row that he would go up in that pine thicket and then go down in the smz up in the pine thicket down in the smz but it was never the same exact spot. So he was never going and bedding in the same exact mm -hmm. spot. And per your criteria, it probably would have ended up being like, I don't even know how many bedding, like a bunch of different bedding sites, but probably four or five distinct bedding areas within that pine thicket where yeah. like one day he's over here in this corner and then the next day he's in the other corner and then the next day he's in the middle and then now he's down here on the edge. Yeah. And he just totally ping-ponged around in there. And same thing in the hardwood SMZ as well. He was not going to the same tree, it seemed, every night. He'd be down on this spot one day, and then the next night, he would pop out 150 yards up. And the next mm -hmm. night, he'd be way down here. And I was like, I was going through looking at it. I'm like, how would you kill this deer? <laughs> like, I'm That's sure he's, I'm sure he's laying down all kinds of great sign in there. You know, he's probably doing some little old whip rubs down in the bottom. Mm -hmm. And But I'm like... I don't know how you'd kill him, like yeah. for real, like with any certainty, because you want to be able to just be like, here's his trail, he's, he's coming out. <laughs> but there's really like no good way to determine that. I mean, you're truly like, it's kind of luck of the draw in that situation, yeah. right? He's probably going to use that trail again, but it may be two weeks later. Yeah, exactly. That, mm -hmm. Yeah. And, so, and you just hope you're there on the right day. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It, it's very confusing. So, so what is this, circuit time? Okay, let me see if I can get this right here. So circuit time is... I guess to address the issue of how often are they going to come back to that particular bedding area. So we, we've already kind of established that it's, it's very rare. You know, most of the time they're going to a, a bedding site, you know, one time. But on those occasions where they do have fidelity and they're coming back over and over, we looked at uh, the amount of time that elapsed for their return. And again, that is broken up by those two week rut phases. And so the, the Y axis is days between consecutive visits at those. And so again, for the handful, the, 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 the small amount of time they do show fidelity, that is the amount of time that it takes before they return to that spot. And, and that's in days. So the shortest interval was during the pre rut which is just over 1.4 days between site visits. And then the highest variability was early rut, which is about 
one 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 point six five or yeah. so days. So, Perfect. Uh, just over one and a half days between the difference of them. So that's interesting. But again, it's interesting to see. But y'all didn't see that happen very often, though. That's, so it's a super right. super small number of times they actually went back to the same betting sites. Right. Not betting areas, betting sites specifically, yeah. uh, which is that twenty yard you know wide area. Uh, Man, I just know right now that everyone listening is like screaming at the radio oh, oh, um, because okay. they're like, what did those places look like? The places with really high fidelity uh, that the Bucks were coming back to over and over again, even though there's very few of them, is there any consistency? Let's say there's like eight of them. Is there any consistency between what each of those look like? Do they have a certain kind of cover type? Are they on a certain kind of feature? You or also the outlying factor what specific bucks were doing it. Was it just a handful of bucks, the ones that were also doing it? Out of the 60, there was only five Man. really doing this. We need to start a GoFundMe where we just like... <laughs> <laughs> we need fun grad students to go hire yeah. and be like, go look at this stuff for us. Yeah, for real. Yeah, So uh, many questions. That, those are great questions. Mm -hmm. Those are great questions. And, and this slide here was just about essentially there. there's no difference in the number of day beds versus night beds. It's just showing that it's pretty much 50-50. You got about the same amount. Uh, you got a 1.75 during the day and 1.5 at night. Did y'all look at the intervals of when they were on their feet versus when they were in beds? And like, was there any consistency with it based off different timing of, you know, when y'all were looking at this? Um, yeah, this is one don't, please don't quote me, but mm -hmm. I'm, I'm thinking like four hours or so. On their feet. Interval on their feet, bed. For like four, four to six okay. bed, four to six. Oh, interesting. Yeah. 